Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be the abandoning games of the narcissist. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So abandonment, that is something the narcissist cannot have. They can abandon anything they want to, but for them to be abandoned, that is a huge injury. They can't tolerate it, they can't take it. There are so many reasons why. First of all, it's because when the narcissist was younger, many things happened to them, including probably being abandoned by somebody. That is not exclusive to why the narcissist became the narcissist, but there are so many fears that the narcissist has. And way up at top of that list, next to being exposed and being understood, meaning being revealed, abandonment is way up there. The narcissist is a shallow, empty, frail person, but they have the largest and the, the biggest bite usually. They have the loudest voice, not always, but many times. And these people, what they do is they want to bully their way through life, bully their way through relationships with friends, family members, neighbors, colleagues, coworkers, business associates, people in communities and or organizations they are and or were a part of. This is what the narcissist is. They are a bull in a china shop and they want to create as much manipulation, confusion, chaos, and destruction as possible. Now again, you may say, well, that's a little rough, Andrew. Well, I'll tell you right now, if you've been in a narcissistic abusive relationship, you know what I'm talking about. These people do not care about anybody but themselves. Now, hence the thumbnail, the abandonment games or the abandoning games of the narcissist. Think about how many times the narcissist has ended relationships. The narcissist that you were in a relationship with at one point, they abandon their own children, they abandon their spouses, they abandon friends, they abandon anybody they can once they get what once they get what they want from those people. And many times also the narcissist will try to recycle some of these people. Example, let's say that the narcissist is a sibling. Let's say you come from a large family. Well, you've identified that probably by now you are the white sheep or the black sheep. In other words, you're probably the person that kept the family together and put out fires and was being a people pleaser or you have a high level of empathy. All of these things and more is what encompasses you most likely. But having said that, let's say the narcissist and you had fallings out throughout childhood, throughout high school, college, and into adult life. Well, the one constant there, first of all, is the narcissist. It is not you because I can assure you, most of the other relationships you are, you were in a part of, you were a part of, or still are, you didn't have that friction. You didn't have that drama. You didn't have that chaos. You didn't have that victimness. You didn't, you weren't abandoned. So what would happen is you would go through cycles with this person, which turned out to be your sibling, and you would continue to give them chances. And they knew what they were doing. They knew every time you picked up the phone or every time you allowed them back into your house or every time you loaned them money or paid for an airline flight or did something on vacation, sprung for their vacation, etc. They knew that they were getting one over on you. Now that's not how you looked at it. Back then you looked at it like, Hey, you had some abilities to help people and this is your sibling who turned out to be a narcissist but back then you didn't know that they were a narcissist so you contributed to the betterment of their life but you watched how the more you gave the more they wanted the more you were available the more they wanted you to become available and you began to become anxiety riddled yourself and frustrated and this person turned out to be not only a narcissist but an energy vampire and they're trying to zap your energy and then finally one day you googled something or typed something in the search engine or youtube something like sibling won't talk to me or sibling taking advantage and boom 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 there you go you're now you entered the rabbit hole of education and exploration and now you all the boxes were checked and you've identified that your own sibling is a narcissist that is a microcosm of what happens in these relationships so when you did that what did you have to do eventually you realize that you are not the giving tree and you can't contribute to the betterment of their life because you have your own family and you have your own concerns and you have to save your own money and your health is number one and your friendships and relationships. So what did you have to do? Well, many times you had to go no contact and block those people, delete them, remove flying monkeys and all people associated with them, including if it was your own sibling. Maybe it's your mom or dad, maybe it's your own children. Think about what I'm sharing with you. The narcissist is everywhere. And it's not until you get the wisdom and you actually apply the tools that are provided for you in the community and you understand that you are the priority. You come first, second, and third. Now, many people can't wrap their head around when I say that. that what that means is, up until this point in time in your life, you probably were giving other people the benefit of the doubt. You were probably putting them before you were putting yourself and you were probably being a empath or doing things, giving, contributing, giving to a fault. 
We don't do that any longer. We have now become awakened and aware, educated and empowered. And we understand a few things. One, our empathy, time, love, money, em uh, energy, everything. It goes to those loved and trusted ones around us, the people that have proven themselves. Number two, that most people don't think like we do. They sincerely don't and I'll create a video like that probably tomorrow because when you wrap your head around the fact that narcissism does exist and that these people, i.e. the narcissists, they don't think anything like you and that number three, they were taking advantage of your kindness and your love and all of your resources and number four, they would have taken everything from you and not blinked an eye. They would have left you right crumbled up like a sheet of paper on the side of the freeway, which is probably what happened. Sorry, not to, meant to trigger you, <coughs> but that's what these people do. They take as much as they can. They give you nothing. They take the best of you. They give you nothing. And they always want to believe they got one over on you. So let's fast forward. Let's say that the relationship ended and you were discarded. Well, what is a discard? Essentially what it is, it's being abandoned. It's when the narcissist, first of all, has a new supply lined up because the narcissist needs people. They need people like you need to breathe air. Number two is they got whatever they could from you and they believe that this new supply could provide another higher level of support for them. So that is why most likely they discarded you. And again, if they did, my heart goes out to you. I know what it's like. It's not a pleasant experience to say the least. It's one of the most challenging, difficult, trying experiences known to humankind next to breaking the trauma bond, which isn't for this video. But why I'm mentioning these things are when the narcissist abandon you, think about how many other people they had, had abandoned when you were in the relationship with them. Think about how many times they isolated their own siblings. In other words, you didn't see, maybe the narcissist had brothers or sisters and that you weren't allowed to see certain people. Well, that was not, wasn't only because the narcissist was trying to isolate you, it's because they already took from them whatever they could and the, their siblings probably wised up and went no contact with them. Think about what I'm sharing with you. There are so many nuances and layers of the onion to be peeled back. One video cannot do it justice, not even close. But my hope is each and every video you're consuming, you're getting nuggets of wisdom and you are really applying the lifelong learning lessons from the narcissistic relationship to present day. That's what we do. That's why we heal. That's why the narcissist doesn't have to heal because when they abandon you, what they did is they just went on into the darkness and they found a new supply and perhaps they relocated with them or whatever they did, who knows. But what they did is they took everything from you that they could and they did not want you to figure out that they were a narcissist. They also did not want you to break the trauma bond. They also did not want you to heal and they did not want you to find that needle in a haystack. But you are doing everything that I just mentioned a moment ago. You're getting the wisdom, you're applying the tools, you're going no contact if you can, you're understanding your value and your worth. And you now know that many people out there don't have your best interest at heart. And the narcissist is at the way top of that list. They always be believe that they're getting the best of whomever they are with. And it doesn't matter who these people are. I've already mentioned it a few times in the video, it could be anybody. But the narcissist is a hollow, shallow, empty person. There's no substance, there's no core to them. What they do is they mimic back people's ideas, they mimic back people's uh, thoughts and notions and experiences and hobbies and they take anything they possibly can from them. Let's, let's talk about hobbies for a quick minute and we will actually throw abandonment in there also. Let's say that you used to go running and you used to play um, squash or pickleball. Okay, great, well those were your hobbies. Then you met the narcissist, what happened? Well, you found out rather quickly that the narcissist didn't want you experiencing those hobbies any longer so you didn't run anymore and you didn't play pickleball or squash. What happened? <coughs> Excuse me, a lot of pine trees here. Uh, what happened is you lost your hobbies, but you didn't just lose your hobbies when you're in the relationship, you lost yourself, you lost your identity, you became a shell of yourself and you became an extension of the narcissist. That is what I mentioned in so many videos because it's true, it's real. The narcissist cap captured you for that period of time, which was the length of the relationship. Now, when the relationship ended, no matter how it ended, after a period of time, perhaps you picked up your hobbies again. Well, what did you do when you were in the relationship with the narcissist? You had to abandon those hobbies because the narcissist didn't want you experiencing those hobbies any longer. No pickleball, no squash, and no running. The narcissist wants you abandoning anything that matters to you when you're in the relationship with them. They hoodwink you, they trick you, they trap you, they manipulate you. They have your head spinning around so quickly in a moment that you don't know what hit you. Next thing you know, you're in the devaluation stage or the narcissistic fog and it's a place A, you didn't know existed, B, you didn't know how you got there, and C, you didn't know your way out. But again, 
you figured it out and my hope is you're healing right now you're headed towards the pinnacle of indifference the mountaintop of indifference when you no longer care about the narcissist or any people associated with them but if you're not there i can assure you if you made it this far in the video you're on the healing path continue to move forward each and every day understand that you had to go through that relationship but abandonment uh, the abandoning games of the narcissist that relationship was littered with them they had you abandon your immediate family members. They had you isolated. They had you probably abandoning your city, town, state, or country. They had you abandoning your hobbies. They had you abandoning the money in your bank account. They had you abandoning in your belief in yourself. They had you abandoning you as a human being. All of this was done by one person. It was the narcissist, and the narcissist was the puppet master. They were pulling the strings of that relationship each and every day, and they were twisting as much of the narrative around as possible having you not believe in yourself. And they were using tools such as gaslighting, stonewalling, the silent treatment, the smear campaign, triangulation, my least favorite thing these people do. And they kept on pressing on that gas pedal of abuse. They kept on throwing you into that deep end of destruction. And they kept on wanting to punish you for being you. And this went on and on and on. And the next thing you know, as the relationship developed, you found yourself isolated more and more. The narcissist wasn't in your proximity nearly as much. They weren't talking to you the way they were talking to you during the fork slash love bomb stage because once they had their hooks in you, they now knew that they didn't have to do anything other than pull the strings of manipulation. They didn't have to tell you the fakeness of the fake I loves you, the fake you're my you're the my twin flame, you're my soulmate, all those things. They pulled back from all that because they did most of their heavy lifting in the beginning of that relationship with a person who turned out to be you who didn't know anything about narcissism. You didn't know that these people existed. Now you know that they're all over the world and these people will continue to exist and continue to look for unsuspecting people, high value people, if you will, empaths, people who don't know what the narcissistic abusive cycle or is, or they look for people who haven't healed. That's why many times the narcissist recycles people that they were in former relationships with because those people haven't found that needle in a haystack and they haven't applied the tools. Or maybe they're in denial, who knows? But the, the path for a beautiful, abundant, bright, light living is going narcissist free. And that's where the doors of abundance will open up for you. That's when you no longer abandon yourself, you abandon the narcissist. Because when you block them and you go no contact, you are sending a clear, succinct message to them that you no longer want anything to do with them and that you've understood behind the mask you've seen it you're not going to play and or participate in any relationship that will do nothing but hinder your growth and hinder your progress in life the narcissist did a fantastic job with you what they did is they try to take you down for the count and they try to take everything they possibly could from you and they succeeded in taking a lot of things from you but they couldn't take everything from you that's why you are here in the community that's why you are learning you're growing you're teaching if you can that's why you are paying it forward when your cup is full and not a minute before and that is when you that is why you do not accept a hoover and remember for the people on the channel that don't know what a hoover is it's when the narcissist is trying to draw you back into the relationship whether it's for a minute an hour a day a week a month a year a decade the rest of your life you do not ever accept a hoover because the narcissist cannot change they are a toxic person who just wants to keep people around them trapped in that narcissistic fog trapped in that devaluation stage this is where they thrive they thrive in the low vibrational quagmire state where they exist and that is where you were existing for a period of time but once you cut the ties which include the emotional financial physical and spiritual ties and you heal and you heal properly in time in your time you will heal but when you do that you leave the narcissist in the past you take the lifelong learning lessons from that relationship and you understand that that relationship was the most toxic relationship you've ever been a part of and you cannot do that ever again because you were up against something you did not even know existed and you beat it you may not feel like you beat it right now but i can assure you you beat it if you've left the narcissist or if you have exited the the um area where the narcissist is their environment i should say if you've done that you're already on your way and you need to know one thing the one constant in the narcissistic abusive relationship is the narcissist. They will continue to go about this planet called Earth looking for people to take from, looking for uneducated people, and they will sell themselves any way they possibly can to get people to believe in the mask. One thing is a fact, and we are learning it more and more in this specific year, and I mentioned this beginning in 2022, and I'll share it again. Everybody, and I mean everybody, reveals themselves in time. You, re you will reveal yourself, I have already revealed myself. The narcissist will reveal themselves. Everybody does. 
So when you are tested and you're tried and you're challenged and you have to pick yourself up by the bootstraps and dust yourself off and heal and really wrap your head around that relationship that almost took you down, but it didn't, that takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of resilience. It takes a lot of fortitude, strength, commitment, dedication, devotion, and understanding. And when you put all of those pieces of the puzzle together, you realize just how strong you are. You may not believe how strong you are right now, but I can tell you, I believe in you more than almost anybody does. You may not believe that, but I am your number one supporter. That's why I created the channel, because I wanna offer the people on the planet the courage and the strength that I had to muster up myself March 31st, 2021 to create this channel, and I'm paying it forward each and every day, and this is my moonshot, and I've let you all know it, and we just celebrated three years in the community a couple weeks ago. This is the path. It's what you must do. You must heal, and you must break free from the narcissist. You must let them go about their life. If they did discard you and they abandon you, my heart goes out to you. Again, I know what it's like. It's not a pleasant experience, but what the narcissist didn't count on was you healing, you learning, you paying it forward, and you growing, and you entering the third version of yourself, the strongest version known to humankind. This is where you are, or this is where you are reaching. It is the pinnacle of indifference, the mountaintop of indifference, where you can look down and you can say to yourself, my goodness, what a climb this was, but I made it and I am here and I am proud of who I am and I will no longer or never in the future ever again doubt myself or believe in anybody's false narrative of anything. I am carving and creating my own path and this is the path. Everyone, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the very green, beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew, namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening or morning, no matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. God bless you. I love you all and remember, continue to move forward each and every day. The narcissist did what they did. They are toxic people. They will continue to keep the cycle going. You need to remove yourself from the cycle and heal. And you need to insulate yourself and have boundaries and protect yourself. One more thing, don't overshare and understand that that relationship was something you had to go through. You're out of it. Begin to heal, if not now, when. I love you all, God bless you, and I will talk to you tomorrow. All right, bye you guys. It is so beautiful here.